Hi everybody and welcome back. Now I'm not hanging about today because I have got a lot to sort out. Now on the last video we actually managed to get the bottom section almost there but not quite. And now I want to turn my attention to this top half because uh, I really need to get this in, get this boarded uh, so I can start uh, uh, sort of allowing my artistic license to get on with the plaster and chipping it away and making it look right. So first things first, I'll be working on this corner here. I'll be using the uh, brick piers, breaking them down and building this corner out. I'll also be doing some work on this side. I want to bring this uh, over a little bit, probably a little bit of brickwork down the side of this uh, window. I want to make it look quite dangerous so we might even be chipping away at this bottom bit so that's it so I'm gonna get on uh, I'll get this corner uh, built up once I've built it all up I'll come back to you so you can take a look I've done as much as I can this side at the moment because I've sort of balanced everything here to give it that sort of feeling that it's all gonna come down at any minute and what I'm going to do now is while that's drying off is I'm going to move across to this side and I'm going to do a little bit of brickwork here. Once that's dried I'll get it all backed up and the same with this side we'll get that all backed up as well with the uh, bricks. Now I'm going to carry on with that and I will be back with you shortly and uh, you can see what's happening. Now both sides have been done. Uh, they're only a single skin, they really do need backing up, but they're a little bit too green at the moment to actually uh, start doing that. So what I'm going to be doing in the meantime, if it stays in shot, ah, that's good, is I'm going to put the plastic strip on. This is the uh, 0.75mm plastic strip by, I can't remember now, oh 6.3. 6.3 wide and what I'm going to do I'm going to cut that and fit that across this gable end and the far gable end so I can st actually start while this is drying is getting some of my uh, plaster sheets on which if you watched the last video there's my plaster sheets uh, I'll just dot and dab them with the glue on the back and we're going to get them glued on up round the window and that and all down the sides so by the time I finish that hopefully this will be all nice and dry so I can back it up and we can start getting this front finished so I'm gonna get on with the strips and when I've done the strips and that I'll come back to you just to so you can see and then I'm gonna carry on with the plaster sheets I have me two plastic strips on one on this side as you can see and one on the far side so everything's good to go now so all I'm going to be doing is the same as I did on the bottom half with my little plasterboard sheets uh, I'm just going to dot and dab these they will stick a little bit proud over the top but when it's all dry I'll get my sanding stick and that will come down as easy as anything uh, if you never caught the first video I'm just going to dot and dab is just dot and dot the actual board with some glue because this just makes it easier at a later date if you want to break off uh, the plaster to reveal the brickwork it just makes life a little bit easier so there goes my first piece like that Now, all I'll be doing now is just filling in all the way around. I'll be doing the gable ends, even though it's not in shot. And also, I'm going to be doing the back. So, I'm going to do the whole lot. Then, when I've finished all that, then I'll come back to you. And hopefully, then we can start getting the actual back of this backed up. Now, front's been boarded out. I have done a little bit of digging, not much. Uh, gable end and the whole of the back has been boarded out as well and the far side now I was going to go inside when I've done that and actually back this wall up 
but it'd be very rude if I didn't do finish off the boarding on the outside because I've got to come inside to actually do these uh, stairwells to make them look very similar to this a little bit precarious and very dangerous so I'm going to be leaving this and I'm going to be moving on to the gable ends now we have two small little issues moving the camera up uh, the first issue is an issue I think I can quite easily get over the actual roof itself this whole top section has got a bit of a twist to it so it's nice and tight along this edge but this edge we've got a little bit of a gap uh, it's an issue I think I can resolve just by doing a bit of fettling on the actual roof line inside and I think I can get that sat down nicely the second issue is original plan I was going to take these fascias off plasterboard up sand down so I didn't have to do too much cutting and then replace the fascias but if I do that the actual plasterboard will bring this fascia out that much that I would lose the overhang which I don't really want to lose so it's one of these times I'm going to bite the bullet and not do it that way instead I'm going to get my plaster sheets and I'm actually going to go to the underside of the fascia so it means a bit more cutting to get all these angles and get them all nice and neat but I get I, I can actually get away with it should I say uh, without having to take these off and then causing more issues by trying to extend the roof line which I don't really want to do because there would be a lot of work involved in that so we're gonna fit all these ends in with a uh, plaster sheet we're gonna plaster sheet the actual chimneys all the way around and then on the top I've got some uh, corbel courses and chimney pots which we're gonna put on as well before we move on to actually lining this out with uh, the brick well the block should I say so that's how far I've got so I'm now gonna do a little bit of fettling and get this roof to sit down nice and tight and then I'm gonna get these ends plasterboarded and I don't think I really need to run through how we're doing it because it's all self-explanatory we just got cuts and we're gonna glue them all on now when I've done all that I'll come back to you and we'll move on and have a look at the corbel courses and the chimney pots. The plaster sheeting now has been completed on the gable ends and the chimneys both ends. Now our next little step is to actually make these uh, chimney caps. Now I've already made these up in good Boo Peter fashion there's one and there's the second one. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you down to the bench and I'm just going to run through uh, everything that I used to actually make these uh, chimney tops. Right, four moulds I'd like to show you. The first mould is the plasterboard sheet. Mould number will be on the screen. L link will be in the description box so you can go directly and find it. Plasterboard sheet, nothing too interesting but it's a nice little mould. Uh, I haven't actually done a video on how to actually do these which I will correct in the next week also these will be coming up on my eBay for those people who haven't got the facilities who just don't want to do them or people who are interested in the mold and want to see what sort of uh, item you actually get out of it so that is the plasterboard sheet so we'll and the next on. one we're going to be looking at is put that to one side bring this one in now this is brick finish for piers and walls and this is what I've actually used to create the uh, staggered effect for the chimney stack now there's no point in me going through and showing you how to glue them together because really they are self explanatory in the mould you get a selection of different bits and pieces of all sizes to fit different piers and in the background you can see I've got the piers and 
you just put these together to make your corbel courses, finishes, and everything like that. They, they, this particular mold will fit all the piers, uh, from the small one right up to the big, because there's three three sizes. There is the real tiny pier, which is about that size, which is a bit too tiny, but uh, you never know; it might come in useful sometime. So mold number bottom screen link in the description so you can go and fi uh, find this and to be honest with you it's a very very self-explanatory thing because it's a bit like playing with Lego you've got corbel courses which you can stack on top with spaces in between another corbel course you can do exactly what you want with them uh, the way I've used them here is I started off with a brick finish which is slightly smaller than the corbel course and I put the corbel course on top and that's that one and then moving up I've used the soldier well yeah the soldier course brick finish which has gone on top which is slightly smaller again and so you get that recess then on top of that I've actually used the one for the uh, two brick pier which finally goes on the top of that and like I said I've used three molds uh, simple reason is because I've had three molds and I've just used bits and pieces to create what I want I mean you can actually stop there if you've only got the one mold and then you can make your own chimney stack like I've done there anything that you've uh, you've got to finish it off you can use now the second mold that I actually used uh, was the this is oh, I can't remember now what is it oh yes it is uh, pier caps now the pier cap one mold number is going to be on the screen link will be in the description this is like a traditional pier cap and all I've done is I've used the smallest one and I've actually used that on the top to finish my stack off now these will all be uh, grouted up and pointed up to get the finish that I want but that comes at a later date and that is that one now the final one that I actually used it's probably one that nobody was going to go out and buy because this is one for roof ridge now the roof ridge it's quite difficult to well not actually quite difficult it's just a pain to do and these make these little tiny half round ridges like so and you're actually all I've done there is just glued two of them together to make my chimney pot and then glued them on the top and that's it and for those who are interested the pier caps and copings they were on my ebay and the brick finishes they will be up very soon on the ebay i won't be doing the ridging because like i say they take too long and there are a lot of messing about it's one of those things that uh, you don't use a great deal of and like i say they're, they're just a pain to do but basically that's it on how to create one of these caps these look well this particular mold there's a lot of possibilities with it uh, for walls piers uh, columns it's just something it's just one of those little things that you can get hold of play with and work out different designs to how you want it so that's it so on to the next stage moving on now to the stone cladding now the stone cladding is going to be running all the way around the center and up these ends now well it's going all the way around round the sides even though i can't get this round let's try again there we go we're going to be running the stone all along these lines here around the back to finish and tidy up everything now the stone that I'm actually going to be using, if I tilt the camera down uh, a fraction, 
yes it's mixstone and the actual pieces I'm going to be using are these very thin uh, slips they're quite tiny they're quite thin but they're going to be ideal to actually go on the corners and not stand out too much now that comes from this mold uh, it is mixed stone it's for uh, stone walls uh, this particular one is designed it doesn't matter which one you pick up a full one half one if you put X amount together they all make the same size block so you've got different variations in your wall and that's br that's pretty good actually because it's it's going to save me a lot of aggravation because all these small ones I will be using to stick all the way around my building and it's a very very simple process we need to sort them out as you can see I'm sorting the full slips out and these are somewhere on the, I think they're about the three quarter so we're going to be needing quite a few of these and quite a few of the full slips and it's a very very simple process which I will show you now now a little bit of a weird angle but what I've done I've taken the sections out off the house and I've actually turned this section so it's facing upwards and the camera's looking down I've done it like this just to make it a little bit easier uh, because I'm starting in the middle of the building and not at the bottom we'll be starting on this plastic strip that runs right the way around the building now as you may have noticed I've also put a little piece of a bit of scrap styrene uh, flat against the plastic at the top that is just so I've got something to push against and keep it nice and level uh, because I'm at a very weird angle to it first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of my uh, little full slips if I can get my big fingers in there and I'm just going to dab a bit of PVA on the back and I'm going to use that to go on this side here now I'm using PVA because we're going to be super gluing these particular ones on but we need to get these positions should I say and the first one's the very important one so this one will be going on here and I want that to overhang and butt up against that one fingers and thumbs but that is where my first one is going to go now I'm gonna take that off and put a little blob of super glue on the back of that and then that will be my first one first fixed one so I can carry on with the rest of them down it I'll give it super glue off camera because I'll probably end up sticking my fingers on there we go uh, just drop that in there and that super glue has gone off it is typical now it's the only problem with super glue and plaster it just doesn't give you no time that is on there good and proper I managed to get it off and we'll redo that one I won't even cut that bit out as a mis mistake because you just know how difficult it is using super glue plaster and plastic so we'll try that again We got it the second time now I'm just going to be running down the rest of them will be done with PVA I'll be doing exactly the same but I will be doing a quarter and where is it I'll just be using because working with PVA is a, it's a, a little bit easier because you've got that little bit of uh, time to actually move things around 
I'm going to put some PVA down there. And also, what you want to get yourself, this is a bit of zero, 0 0.5 tarred. And we just be using that as a spacer. And just keep making sure they're nice and level. Gives you a little bit of time, PVA. And then take that out. And that's going to give you your nice gap. And it's just continuously continuing down. So we use a full one next time, and we use the little bit of plastic in between each time and push it together to get your gap. And just make sure that the overhang is enough for when you do the opposite side that they all butt up nice and neat. Now, I'm gonna leave you there because the simple reason is I'm in a very awkward position with the camera and everything and I'll get this all ran down and when I've done it I'll come back to you. Now to help me and speed things along what I've actually made I made a, a little profile if I just unclamp it and all it is is a few bits of styrene uh, scrap styrene I'll get it into shot and I've just made a little offset the distance that I require the corner blocks to hang over and also because it was clamped against the wall there it also gave me a nice straight line down the edge so when I come to put the other ones on they just butt up and we'll have a nice straight corner now I am going to go round to this side and I'm going to do no difference than I did with here I'm going to put a piece of styrene on the back We'll glue the first one in and then I'll run them down. When I've completed all them, I'll come back to you so you can have a look. Now that's one corner completed. Quite happy with it. It's turned out well. The little profile did its job and they've come out nice and neat. And I'm really happy with that. Now I've got seven more corners to go. So I'm going to get on with them seven corners. And when I've finished doing all the corners, I'll come back to you so you can actually see what it all looks like together. Now the corners have been completed and if we swing it round to the first one, nice and neat, nice and straight, quite happy with that, sits nicely. The second one, excuse me, that one sits nice as well, sits nice there on the joint, you won't be able to see that when we're finished. Uh, the third one, a little tiny bit out, not much, but can be resolved uh, with a little bit of fattening behind the back of it and get it moved this way a little bit. Now, the fourth one, I was going to say the third one there, the fourth one, uh, not a disaster, but the whole building is out. And if I can just bring you in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Right, there we go. As you can see, it actually stepped out here it's the width of one of these pieces of stone uh, how do we resolve it I could use slightly thicker stone like that I could take them off run the thicker stone up and just move everything across and it would disappear no problems at all but I'm not going to do that I've decided to do it a different way what we've got here, we've got a nice big crack. So I'm going to continue this crack up and over and down this part of the wall. So it looks like that's actually been pushed out. So when the vehicles, when that tank's gone in there, a bit heavy handed, it's pushed this wall out as it's gone in. And it will just, I think it will just give it another uh, different effect. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy to leave that and I'm happy to do that. Now, we move on, uh, when I bring you back out on focus, well, on zoom, there we go. So, the next uh, thing to do is to get these, the stone put along these plastic strips. Now, I'm not gonna do this on camera for the simple reason is I'm using super glue, 
I really need to be right over the top of it to actually glue these on because they're instant once you put them down they're gone but all I'll be using is the slips with the spacer exactly the same as what I did there on the side but just running long ways I'll be using that, that top edge as my straight edge and I'll be making sure that all my uh, slips are level with that and I'll also do, be doing the same on the sides on the gables and at the top I can already see a small issue coming up at the top here against the fascia but I will resolve that problem when we get well, well, well actually when I get to it uh, I shall cut them first and fit them and I shall see what they look like if not we might have to do might have to do a little bit of work on the fascia I don't know yet but that's my next little bit I should get all that done uh, all the way round and then I should come back to you so you can have a look and then we'll go on, go on if that is going to be a little issue now I've put all the slips on along the seams and I was correct we are going to have a bit of an issue on these gable ends now I've not really decided how I'm going to get over this I've uh, been looking into a, a few different ideas but one of my ideas is to get slightly thicker stone which is that one there which is a lot thicker take this fascia right off and actually run that stone up as the fascia at the end just as a uh, a finish but I'm still thinking about that so all that size done and as you can see if I tilt the camera down a little bit sorry about that I've actually started to do my break in the wall uh, because I got uh, a bit, bit carried away in the hangout so we've got that side done and we've got this side done uh, so we'll part the way there what are we going to do next well well what I'm going to do next is show you something that I've uh, been playing with should I say which is not going to be in this video totally but we will be doing a video of it and what I've been playing about with is lighting now good friend of mine Les out the hangout we were talking and he sent me some of these I get me shot and you can't even see them because they're that small these are little LED lights and he sent me some of these on now if we turn this round because I wanted not actual lighting as in lights hanging from the ceiling uh, that which work I wanted lighting so you can actually see inside a lot easier because without the lights it's very dark and dingy so that is something that will be coming up later on wiring all these in uh, there's a, quite a few more to go but I've just been playing there will be ones at the top as well and in other places and while we're talking about Les because I, I do want to thank him as well for send me, sending me these little LEDs now Les uh, he's got his own channel I'll give him a little bit of a I don't do many shout outs but this is one uh, Les extremely good modeler at the moment he's actually building a huge great big waterfront and it is a big waterfront uh, with cafes and bookshops and good knows what else on with the bridge and everything else searchlights it is a humongous build it is he's well worth a look so I will put the link to his channel in my description well worth going across there having a look if it's only for ideas well worth a good look and I will say now thank you Les for sending me them LEDs so what are we going to be doing next uh, to be honest with you I don't really know uh, I'm sort of like stuck at the moment about this gable end when we lift the camera back up and this video has been going on now for quite a while now I, can't, I don't even know how, how long this is total so what I'm going to do I actually going to wrap this video up now uh, and it will give me then a good chance to have a think about uh, how to actually resolve this problem on the gable end uh, I will video it all what I'm doing 
so it, it won't be just a, a surprise so with that all I can do is say thank you very much for joining me and hopefully we'll see you on the next video until then <laughs>